At the moment that you walk out of the temple, Oliver, you feel this buzzing sensation on your back from where your sword hangs. Oh, I'm getting a page. Hang on. <laughs> Are you taking out the sword? Yeah, I'll take a couple steps over there to take the sword out. And you go into the alley, take out your sword so that no one else can see. It's awful of you. Um, and a name begins to carve itself in green on the blade. Bit by bit, the name Edvard Needle is spelt out on your sword. I think that we should go find Captain Zaj and update him. Uh, you finally get to the Basilisk Gate and to the original, uh, to the original um, office that Zaj was at. You see uh, a number of the same guards that were there before, uh, some of Zaj's own personal guards, which gives you the idea that Zaj is probably here. You go up to the uh, the door, knock, the two guards who are standing by the side. Oh, side. I thought this was his office door. I'm sorry, I feel dumb. <laughs> is that an in-game character that you said that? Because uh, that would be yeah, perfect. <laughs> oh, I thought this was his office door. Oh, I feel dumb. <laughs> <laughs> One of the guards kind of chuckles. He's like, he's in. I'll see if he's available. Opens mm -hmm. the door, <laughs> looks in. Hey, Zodge, you got guests. The four from the other day. No, with the, the dead three. Oh yeah, we did take them out. Look at us, we're so good at our jobs. He says you're welcome Forgot we on even in. did it. All right, okay, okay. we go. walk in. So we go He's in. Done. You guys enter in. Zodge is kind of sitting down at the desk, like mulling over papers, like this is too much work for one man. Never get into politics, kids. I'm more interested in the Van Thampus connection and something about, oh, I don't know, the, the entire Flaming Fist being overthrown? I don't know anything about that. You've already said everything. You've okay. given everything away. Stop acting like a child. Hey, don't <laughs> yell at her. And Mary just, like, sits down in a chair and just we shuts up with the whole We will sit down and tell you everything we know as soon as we get paid for the job you originally gave us. If there's anything down there, then... I will feel like you have sold me a false bit of goods since you said you have cleared out the bathhouse. You have indeed cleared out the bathhouse. I, I said in case. So just let, they may, if they we come back, cleared we cleared it out. We didn't patrol it. Yeah. Every branch, they, every hallway that we went down is clear. And they may have come back. Just saying. You cannot be held responsible for anyone who was outside. Hey, I'm just trying to make sure none of your guys get, you know, bamboozled. Bamboozled. Or bushwhacked. Bushwhack. Shanghai. Shanghai. Surprise. Uh, that one. <laughs> you know, the cold. I like you. These guys, they, they use magic. But I you, think we should just be friends. What time are you off? <laughs> I'm always off for you. <laughs> this is getting weird. <laughs> you do the schedule. Listen, <clears throat> you have rightfully earned this. And he places before you a bag of gold. Now, who is my target? Lamra Van Damper. <laughs> One of the three re remaining dukes in Baldur's Gate. What would, what would the Lamra want with the Flaming Fist gone? It, does, it doesn't add up. What would anyone want with power. absolute power? They can do whatever they want. If... It's possible. I would like you to go after her and may let her know that Captain Zaj in the lower city is not going to be pushed around by a duke. Especially not the Lamra Van Thamper. I've got it. Captain Zaj wants her dead. That's what I heard. That's what I heard. Right about. Find out what you can. Discretion is key. Do not be evaded unless you know you have a shot at taking a run at the Van Thampas. I'm not hearing a no. It's just I how can, we go about it. I cannot yeah. tell you to kill Thalamra. <laughs> you all yes. leave the blade. You guys exit down from your room. You walk down, and there is a cloaked figure in armor waiting for all of you to come down. And you hear a younger female voice say, I'm looking for Tusuk. Why? What? Who's that? She like puts down her hood and takes off her helm. And you see this, what looks like a teenager. She has uh, brown skin and red hair. And she kind of looks up. She says, I want to know what man took out Amrick Van Thamper. Why would Who? we know? Who are you? My name is Rhea Mantelmorn.
I want to take it down the Van Fampers, and I heard that someone took a run at him from the Low Lantern last night. Hey. Oh, we hey, did that. Now we're getting somewhere. Um, Our kind of person. Where are your companions? You said they're here, but why are they not with you? Some of them are arrested. Others I can't find. Who were they arrested by? The Flaming Fist. Bullies. What for? Well, it's a good thing you saw us, and I flipped the badge. <laughs> she, she, like, no, 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 no. Like, it's, you're it's okay. good. We, we're gonna, you we're gonna work us, this up. If you want to help us, maybe we can help you. But you're part of the Flaming Fist. Uh, we're the good part of the purpose. fist. Not on purpose. There is no good part of the We're the kind of, of fist city. you want. What? Look, I... I have no leads. All I know is that Fabius Krieg is somewhere in this city. At least I, that's... Fabius Krieg? He's kind of the ruler of El Terrell. I, I guess... Older Raven Guard was supposed to come to our city, but Fabius Krieg was spotted somewhere in this one. Which means that he was out sometime before... What happened happened. As if he, he might knew. have known. Maybe older Raven Guard activated the companion in a way that caused it to do what it did. I thought maybe Fabius Krieg might know something about it. All I know is that I've seen him with Van Thamper guards, and I'm pretty sure they're keeping him against his will. But that's not important right now. Alterell's wherever Alterell is right now, we're here in Baldur's Gate, and we have a job that we need to do ourselves anyway. And it sounds like you might be able to help us out, so you should. Extra hands make for less work. I'm in. Just I'll for a moment. Mother yeah, <laughs> of course. Right. Sounds like you're going to be in on this one. From what I I'm hearing right now. Yeah. Wait, have you told anyone the name? No, this oh, is the okay. first time I'm mentioning it, so. Okay, leader of the press, why you ask? Uh, he misspelled my name in the article when we first got here, and I just kind of want to talk to him about it. Merritt just like Merritt looks at him so sad and just he spelled your name wrong. Yeah, how hard is it to get all of her clothes off right? You know. I mean, you know, like Ray like blinks her eyes. She's like, "I'm sorry, your name is what?" Happens. <laughs> From what I've heard, Thurswell may be controlling these imps. Yeah, that sounds about right. And that might be the reason he never leaves the house. Listen, you guys might want to. I I don't know. I I get it from the three of you, not from her, but. There's something, maybe it's following you? There's something infernal or about you. I take off my ring and hold it up. It's this. I'm sorry. <laughs> You're not... <laughs> Start playing. I slam the broadsword into the table. <laughs> Jeez. Was that necessary? No. What are the, the names? Why is this one crossed out? Don't... Reasons. 85% <laughs> of the things that they do aren't necessary, and you just kind of roll with it. They're good people, though. You do what you can to protect yourself. Mm -hmm. Whatever it is you're mixed up in, fine. You guys are my best shot at getting my city back, so despite whatever you carry, and she kind of flicks the ring back to you. I'm still trying to work the sword out of the table. Just <laughs> Lupin's like, oh my gosh! That I'll mend it. Don't have mending. <laughs> <laughs> Don't have mending. Is that what you and lean over and tell me? <laughs> 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 I'll mend it. I don't have mending, guys. <laughs> oh my gosh. Nobody has mending. <laughs> nope. I thought about it, but why would I need it? Look, on three, okay? And she like takes a towel and wraps it on like, the under end of the sword. Like, wait, one, wait, one, two. Wait, th go on three or one, two, go? One, two, one, two three. three, go. Is three it, is is when it we rock, paper, three, scissors? Go, yeah. Or ro a rock, paper, oh, scissors? Oh, no, not the season <laughs> one thing again. <laughs> no, I'm... I'm not getting into this. Okay. On one, three. One, one two. two. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> Sorry, he doesn't know how to count that far. <laughs> Oliver, let's go ahead and start with you. You're going to make your way to the paper. Yeah. You find Alec, the blonde-haired boy. Yeah. What's oh, that? my boy. He's like, my boy. It seems boy. that you and I always... You know, yeah, you it's weird. Editorial <laughs> place. I need to get there. Newspapers. <laughs> Baldur's Mouth? Sure. You need to learn what the fuck things are called here, Listen, kid. if you want this gold, <laughs> you'll shut your trap and get me there. You're going to pay me gold? Do you want it or not? I can find another orphan, or I can make one. <laughs> I got to regain my composure. <laughs> Good luck. Boy, howdy. <laughs> Was there Taking the paper like that had my article in it, like I will go to the like front entrance, like, like where like the lobby would be. Okay. Can I help you? 
Yeah, I'm looking for uh, Edvar Needle. Oh, I'm, yeah. You're looking for Edvar. Yeah. Oh, um, well, you've. <laughs> in any other day, you would come to the right place. I can direct you where he is. He's doing a, a special story on Garmalt's House of Mastery. You make your way to Garmalt's House of Mastery. <laughs> you go up the uh, the stairs, um, and you do see uh, this uh, gentleman, kind of older. Um, uh, hairline is kind of receding, like taking it down. So what do you hope to accomplish with the Mastery House? He's like, it doesn't matter what we accomplish. We are creating the greatest warriors the world has ever seen here. Now, if you have any more dumb questions, ask any of the trainees. They'll give you stupid enough answers. We're finished here. You, sir, have you come to spar? No, I'm afraid I'm, I'm here to talk to the news guy. Upsetting. Please, Truly. come back when you have business here. Edvard's like, well, that went well. Hi, how can I help you? Hi, I take out the old paper with my article. I said, you want a story of a lifetime? Story of a lifetime? Uh, I'm the one who released those orcs. I'm Oliver Klozoff. What? What? <laughs> that's, no, that's my name. Hey, you guys are walking as he says, that's what I hate about all this. You know, there's so much darkness and chaos in the city, and I just, I don't want to be a part of any of it. And, except the parts where we expose it. You know, people making informed decisions is what makes this place better. It makes us rise out of this cesspool. Yeah. You can leave it to a close off to expose things. It can't be yes. closet. What? It, I don't understand. <laughs> Would you Listen, like let's to go just go to the let's get this Fair enough. We go back to uh Zarin and Rowan. Um as you guys have paid forty gold for what is essentially a grab bag of stuff from Philogar's fireworks. Um, you enter that. into Joplin's, and he's like, "Oh, <laughs> aren't you that?" He's in the corner. Thanks. He's in the corner. Uh, no, my way to the booth. <laughs> Sit down. Sorry, there. How can I help you? Yes. I need a way to get rid of a spell. Interesting. Here I thought you were trying to learn more about spells, and now you're trying to get rid of one. What? Not doing very well. You're going back and forth in your goals. <laughs> I want a spell to get rid of a spell. You need to dispel magic. That. <laughs> that. Yes. Now, I apologize for before. I, I gave you a fake name. My name is Imbrelin Schoond. And I am the court wizard to the four dukes of Baldur's Gate. I will teach you how to use the spell to spell magic. He spends the next half hour of the day teaching you how to use the spell to spell magic. You can now add it into your repertoire. Enjoy. And you find your way to the Van Thamper Villa. It is crawling with guards. And not watch guards. They are uh, people who, fla who fly the... Um, a, uh, a pitchfork that is placed downwards in a fist. Uh, that is the Van Thamper, like, sigil. Oliver. You have uh, sat down with uh, Edvard at the Smiling Boar. It's like, so, while I'm doing this story for you, I assume that we're going to do this under an alias? Uh, you know what? No, I'm, I'm brazen enough that you're going to get the full story from me. That seems dangerous for you. You sure? Do I look like a man who's afraid of danger? I mean, you're messing with an entire, like... Do I look like a man who's afraid of danger? I thank you for your time, Mr. Klozoff. You know, you said it right. Yeah, I'm, I know I did. That's why I'm disappointed. <laughs> I thank you for your time and your story. We need to vet this, obviously. There's a few things that don't add up. See if I can get any witnesses from people who were there. Take me back to the paper. To your to the paper? Yeah, the Baldur's mouth. Not a problem. Let's go. Uh, you do make it back to uh, Baldur's mouth. He goes in. He says, "Thank you, Mr. Klozoff. We might be reaching out for further comments if we yeah. do something. I don't know if that'll happen, but we'll see the interest of the people and we'll go back to you." All right. In the meantime, we're gonna go ahead and uh, go back over to Merritt for a bit. Uh, you and Rhea kind of go up, and uh, this this dwarf is just kind of like sitting down, and he kind of like opens his eyes. He's like, "Hello, hello." Hi. He kind of stands up, brushes some of the leaves off of him. Hello. 
How may I help you? Um, my friend and I are <clears throat> looking for a bit of insight, a bit of guidance, and we heard that we could potentially go to you for that. A little butterfly like lands on his uh, finger. He's like, perhaps. What ails you? We are walking down a path and we don't know which way to go next. I may see what is in store for you. Now, should I do this, you must know that what is in store for all of us is not something we wish to know, but something we need to know sometimes. I like you. Thank you. He goes over to the tree and he like takes a piece of the bark. He says, well, come close, come close. And she does. He's like, now the sap on this tree will turn red and will show us a depiction of something that may yet come to pass. And he like takes it and rips down the bark of the tree. You see placed in there, just in your first like initial view of it, it looks like there are these large spires that are uh, going through a person, kind of like bisecting them. And you notice that it, they are standing above and talking down to someone um, in a group. Something you notice is that one of this, these members has what looks to be like a loot on their back. One of them stands uh, with a large great sword. There's another woman, and there is a figure that unmistakably you see as you. And you're speaking up to this impaled figure. The depiction has a, a sky that is twisted and torn. And he says, my, my. I do not know what to make of this. I didn't. That's okay. That's okay. You should go now. I, but... it's, it's okay. But you should go now. I didn't do anything. I didn't make a deal. I haven't... Like, I'm, I'm still... I'm telling you three times. It is time for you to go. Okay. You are there at five o'clock. Dawn is, or dusk. Dang it! Dusk is slowly approaching. We're going to relabel this episode, not Dawn. <laughs> um, you, uh... Don't Dawn till dusk. You do see... <laughs> You do see the ladies hall in front of you. You begin to play on your uh, on your lute, and uh, a, a small crowd starts to pick up in front. You do notice that some people are kind of like looking outside as they were praying, and like after a while, a lot of the congregation, people not associated with the church, kind of head out, and you have a small crowd around you, kind of just enjoying this this little song. As you play uh, the innate chords that trigger the invisibility spell the entire loot kind of lights up a little bit with a flourish, and all of a sudden you can feel your form. The light bends around you. Now, you are invisible, which means that you have advantage on stealth move, uh, stealth checks. For some reason, <laughs> <laughs> they mind the Shrine of Timora. And you walk over to the, stone, the, the glass case. I twist the ring and pray it works. You feel the magic uh, leave out of the out of the ring and fire uh, off, and it c curls around the case, and you feel the spell take hold. I'm gonna feel around the edges of the case. You do notice in the back there that there is a mechanism that's used to lower the stone into and out of this thing. The glass case itself, as you kind of like move it a little bit, is stuck to it. I cast magic missile on the case. And the three magic missiles appear and from all sides break and shatter this glass case. Um, the look stone lays bare, open, it looks like. I grab it. Ring. Um, the, one of the priests like, suddenly looks up, looks over at the area. They're like, the stone! I put up one of the smoke bombs. This time we're taking the party into the temple. <laughs> nice. So you see the priest being like, wait, wait, no, 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 stop. Oh, 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 no. The lion begins to get picked up and moved by the crowd. It's As he's being walked in, uh, the priest is like, put me down, put me. And he sees like the flicker of Rowan. He's like, she's, she's, but it's too late. He's already been pushed into the temple. And I'm out. Yes. 
I'm gonna try to let the crowd do their thing, kind yep. of move towards the temple, and work my way around them. I will see you go out, and as you leave on the way out, you'll take one look back at this, like, kind of, like, thing that, that sort of just started and turned it into its own organic, like, moving thing. You look back and you see the, the Shrine of Timora, who's, like, sitting there, and you see the statue look over at you and do this. You go back to the Mando Cry Mansion. You enter in through the old familiar doors, and the, and the door leading down to the basement opens up on its own. One of the chain devils that looks down. Have you come to visit us? In the back, you see the, the twin brother holding out the stone. They say, Have I forgotten something? I thought we had a deal. You gave me a ring. Yes, we did. This stone feels like it's worth a lot more. Now is not the time to be bargaining. I want protection from Timora. <laughs> no. Giving us the stone sees your pack fulfilled. Done. We have given you something, and you give us something of equal value in return. That is the nature of a transaction. Do you have any other favors that you have to do, or is it just the one? Just the one. Well, then I say be done with it, and we can deal with the consequences. Fine. Drop the stone. <sighs> You see this dark essence as the chains kind of wriggle around and begin to infuse this stone. You hear this kind of breaking inside of it, almost like boulders crashing against each other as the essence of the stone is corrupted, warped, and turned black by the evil of this chain devil. <sighs> the infernal hierarchy is not... Terrible. All devils just want a better deal. Not unlike humankind, dwarven kind, elven kind, all kinds. I will be promoted for this. When you see me next, I will have taken a different form altogether. <laughs> and the two chain devils begin to ascend into the ceiling by their own chains. You're left empty in this green room. You're I'm out. 